Well, welcome to our online worship for the Feast of Christ the King. My name is Joe White. Well, Christmas, can you believe it, is only five weeks away. But let's not get carried away because the church is beginning preparations for the season of Advent before Christmas proper dawns upon us. So now we acknowledge the Bunurong people as the traditional custodians of this land and we pay our respect to their elders, past, present and emerging. The Lord be with you and also with you. The Collect for the Feast of Christ the King. Let us pray. Everlasting God, whose will is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, our Lord and King, grant that the people of earth now divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his gentle and loving rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel, chapter 23. Now these are the words of David, the oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man whom God exalted, the appointed of the God of Jacob, the favorite of the strong one of Israel. The spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His word is upon my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, one who rules over people justly, ruling in the fear of God, is like the light of morning, like the sun rising on a cloudless morning, gleaming from the rain on the grassy land. Is not my house like this with God? For he has made me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. Will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? But the godless are like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be picked up with the hand. To touch them one uses an iron bar or the shaft of a spear, and they are entirely consumed in fire on the spot. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We share in Psalm 132. Lord, remember David and all his trouble, how he swore an oath to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not enter the shelter of my house, nor climb into the comfort of my bed. I will not sleep, I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids, till I find out a place for the ark of the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. Lo, we hear it at Ephrathah. We, we found it in the fields of Ja'ah. Let us go to the place of his dwelling. Let us fall upon our knees before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place, you and the ark of your might. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness and let your faithful ones shout for joy. For the sake of David, your servant, do not turn away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn to David an oath which he will not break. One who is the fruit of your body, I will set upon your throne. If your children will keep my covenant and the commandments which I teach them, their children also shall sit upon your throne forever. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 1. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, 
the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it will be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the reading of the Gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John chapter 18, beginning at verse 33. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so are you a king? Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. For the gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The feast of Christ the King marks the end of the church's year. And from here we move into the season of Advent and thence to the celebration of the 12 days of Christmas. It might seem rather strange to hear the story of Pilate's interrogation of Jesus, just as we're starting to think about Christmas. More of an Easter story really, isn't it? Well. Jesus before Pilate forms part of the passion narrative, which seems so out of step with the impending birth of Jesus. And yet here we are confronted by questions about Jesus' authority and kingdom. Pilate asks Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? A loaded question because if the answer is yes, then Jesus is a threat to the power of Rome, which Pilate represents, and he is a threat to the power of Herod and to the high priests of the temple in Jerusalem. If the answer is no, well, where do we go from there? Jesus is clearly a troublemaker, disturbing the peace and upsetting the order of the region. But what do we do about him? That is the question. Pilate then asks Jesus, what have you done? Surely Pilate has heard the reports and knows what Jesus has done. And then he asks, are you a king? But even then he doesn't understand what it means for Jesus to be a king. And in the end, well, we know what happens, don't we? If we were to ask ourselves Pilate's questions about Jesus, our answers would no doubt lead us in a very different direction. Is Jesus the king of the Jews? Well, yes. The charge sheet at his crucifixion bears witness to this. I-N-R-I, the letters that we often see above crucifixes, refers to Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. The answer for us is, however, much bigger than simply that. Jesus is King of the Jews and much more, as Revelation chapter 1 proclaims, 
He is him who is and who was and is to come, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. Jesus is king of all who choose to honour him as their saviour and Lord. And we'll come back to this idea later. Then Pilate asked, what have you done? What have you done? As witnesses to the life and ministry of Jesus and of his power in our own lives, our answer to this question is both deeply personally personal and profoundly universal. We are witnesses to what Jesus has done and is doing for us, and we are witnesses of what Jesus has done and is doing in the world. In these days, we are only glimpsing the breadth and awesome power and the height and the depth of what King Jesus is doing. We feel his power, but we are yet to understand it completely. Pilate's question means much more to us than simply, what have you done? It is, what have you done? What are you doing? And what are you continuing to do in and through the power of the Holy Spirit working in us and in the church and in ways that we are yet to fully comprehend? Pilate asks directly, uh, indirectly, are you a king? Are you a king? For us, this question is important. Our answer is yes. But what does our yes mean? If Jesus is our king, then we are by definition his subjects. We might even be his slaves, his servants. I'm reminded of the first two commandments from Exodus chapter 20. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall make no idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Well, many people think that idolatry is something that belongs to primitive peoples, or that it's the worship of statues and icons of the saints. I'd like to suggest that we can all slip into idolatry when we give supreme value to things like possessions, pleasure, success, fame, beauty, and power. Well, these things, they're not wrong in themselves, but if we let them rule our lives, then we can find ourselves in a bit of a mess. When we worship other gods, we can find ourselves living rather superficial lives. But the greatest harm of idolatry is that it causes us to forget the true God. Jesus is our King and Jesus is our Saviour. What happens after the interrogation of Jesus by Pilate is a fulfilment of his role as our King. The soldiers mock him as king. They put royal robes on him. They give him a scepter and a crown, but these things are icons of his suffering and his sacrifice. And it is these that make Jesus the ruler of our hearts. It is these that make Jesus the king of our hearts. We enthrone him because of what he has done for us on the cross. Pilate asked if Jesus is a king. We say Jesus is our king forever. Jesus is not like any earthly king. He's not a tyrant or a dictator. He doesn't have any jewels or palaces to, to um, control him. He does not rule by fear. Jesus' rule is just, loving and peaceful. He lays down his life for his subjects and shares all the riches of his kingdom with us. And this is 
not like any earthly king. Earlier I mentioned that Jesus is the king of all who choose to honour him as their saviour and lord. We honour Jesus as our king when we take seriously our relationship with him. Putting Jesus first in our lives is a lesson in humility. Sometimes a misplaced sense of pride can be an obstacle to true humility. Teresa of Avila tells of how she was embarrassed to ask for help in learning the prayers of the church. Instead of admitting that she hadn't studied and that she was pretending to know what to do, she just kept quiet about it. And that silent secret, well, it burnt a dark spot in her relationship with her fellow sisters and even a relation in, a, in relation to Jesus. The only remedy for her was to ask for help to humble herself and admit she'd been pretending all this time and to ask for them to help her. From that lesson, Teresa grew in humility and she became more concerned about truth and less concerned about her image, how she appeared to other people. Pilate asked, what is truth? We don't hear this question in our reading today, but there it is in John chapter 18, verse 38. What is truth? Well, Jesus said of himself, I am the way and the truth and the life. When we honour Jesus as, as our king, it's almost impossible, impossible for us to be pride-filled to be arrogant or indeed to be self-serving. The truth is that Jesus is then our truth. We serve only him who is the way, the truth, and the life of all who believe in him. Teresa wrote a poem about her desire to be what God wanted her to be, not what she thought she ought to be. I'm going to share that poem with you now. I am yours and born for you. What do you want of me? Majestic, sovereign, unending wisdom, kindness pleasing my soul, God sublime on being good. Yours you made me. Yours you saved me. Yours you endured me, yours you called me, yours you awaited me, yours I did not stray. What do you want of me? In your hand I place my heart, body, life and soul, deep feeling and affection mine, spouse, redeemer sweet myself offered now to you, what do you want of me? Give me, if you will, prayer, or let me know dryness, an abundance of devotion, or if not, then barrenness. In you alone, sovereign majesty, I find my peace. What do you want of me? Yours I am. For you I was born. What do you want of me? Let us pray for the world and for the church. Sovereign Lord, we pray for the world where too often rulers use their power to exploit <coughs> and oppress their people. We pray for justice and peace and a fair distribution of the world's resources and wealth. God, our creator, ruler and guide, we pray for grace and gentleness as we deal with climate change and the outworkings of the climate summit in Glasgow. Help us, Lord, as we negotiate change 
on a global level. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign Lord, we pray for the church seeking ways to serve you and not ourselves. We pray that the church might be a powerful witness to the rule of Christ in our lives. As we approach the season of Advent, help us to prepare our homes and our hearts for your coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign Lord, we pray for the sick and suffering, asking for your comfort and peace for those who are troubled in mind or body. Heal those who are in pain. Comfort those who are sad or lonely. And bring to each a deep and abiding sense of your presence this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign Lord, we remember those who have died, especially remembering this week, the Reverend George Sansom late of this parish. Lord Jesus, our priest and our King, we remember our loved ones who are now with you in peace and safety, praying rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may, by your grace, receive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The notices for this week. We are really excited about the up and coming annual parish dinner to be held on Tuesday the 7th of December. This year our guest speakers will be Rock House Band who will play a few sets and talk to us about their long careers in the music industry. Bookings for this event are essential, so please get in touch with me and I'll pass on your interest to our coordinator. A service of traditional nine lessons and carols is planned for Sunday the 12th of December at 4 p.m. at St Philip's. We hope you can join us to enjoy some great music, singing of Christmas carols, and start getting into the Christmas spirit. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Well, perhaps this week you are starting to make plans for the coming holiday season, perhaps even making plans for Christmas. Let that be a feeling of joy and excitement in your life. And may God bless you. <music>